Hey, let's try this. Everybody say hi. hi. All right, let's go. All right, let's look at our um, uh, change in income. Now, change in income is our first demand shifter. Change in income. What this means, if in a city, let's just take a city. Could be a city, could be a town, could be a country. Any unit of measure, but let's just use a city. In a city, if the incomes increase, demand for products increase. So if we got a city, we got um, uh, Minneapolis. If <clears throat> Apple hires 5,000 engineers to come and move to Minneapolis and work here, and they pay them all $250,000 a year, and yes, there are engineers who make this much money and more. So, they're bringing, how many say it was? 5,000? 5,000 engineers and paying them all a quarter million a year. Is demand going to go up for some products? Yeah. yeah. It just will because there's more, there's more money. There's more money around. And they're high paying jobs. China, where the factories have opened up overseas, they've actually raised incomes in China. Does that increase demand for Coke? The pop. Does that increase demand? <laughs> Probably the other one too, actually. But does that increase demand for Coca-Cola? Yes. Yeah. More people in China will buy Coca-Cola because they're making more money. Just makes sense, doesn't it? Now, we could take Detroit, Michigan, Flint, Michigan, a lot of places in Ohio, Stark County, Ohio, where there's not the jobs. Incomes have gone down. Many people who used to work in like making cars are now working at Walmart and places like that. So the income has gone yeah. down. All right, let's take a demand for oh, BMWs. So in Flint, Michigan, is there going to be a big demand for BMWs? No. It's going to go down because there's not as much money. Change in income, it doesn't have to do with price, does it? None of these are price. But this can cause a, this can cause a shift in demand. Now let's look at a practice problem that we're going to do. We won't need graph paper for these. We don't need to graph these perfectly. We're just going to give like approximations. So let's look at our example. The Ford truck plant in St. Paul cuts off cuts all the employees' hours from 40 to 30. So the Ford truck plant in St. Paul says, you know what, we don't want to close. And we don't want to lay people off. So let's say they get together with the workers, maybe it's a union, the union and management degree, and they say, okay, let's do this. Let's just go everybody 30 hours a week so we all keep our jobs. Sometimes this happens. So no one has to get fired. They're not going to make as much money, though, are they? No. But they get to keep their jobs. Sometimes this happens. So let's say this scenario happens. What you may do right now is draw a demand curve for movie tickets near the Ford plant in St. Paul. Maybe there's a movie theater right nearby, and a lot of people who work in the plant also live near the plant. Doesn't that just make sense? And if they went to a movie, they'd probably go to one near where they work and live, right? So what I want you to do right now is we are going to draw a demand, demand curve for this one. And that's something we can kind of do. All right, change in number of consumers. So income can make a demand shift, left or right. But it's not the only thing. Also, we can see the change of the number of consumers. And I'm going to give you two cities here we're going to use as an example. If the population goes up, there's just more people moving into a city or an area. What will happen to demand? It goes up because there's more people. So we'll take Vegas. Las Vegas was a small town all the way until 1950. It was a small town. Then it took off. Now this only goes up to 1995. Since then it's been kind of flat. But is demand for goods going to be going up in Las Vegas from 1950 to 1995? Yeah. Demand for goods is going to go way up. So if you're selling movie tickets or anything else, you're going to be selling more in Las Vegas. If you want to open a business, and it was to be 1980, might you want to open up your business in Las Vegas? Yeah. In 1980? Look, look. if you were like reading this graph, and you saw that, 
Would you think Las Vegas might be a good place to open a business? Yeah, because you're going to have more customers. More customers means more demand. Now, we'll take the opposite. By the way, this is notes. You can write all these examples down. We can use these on our test. Take a look at Detroit. Detroit went from being one of the biggest cities in America, having nearly 2 million people in the city proper, Detroit, to now Detroit has, oh, about... 650, 700,000. Detroit's population has been cut in about a third from where it was in its peak in years are kind of hard to see on here. I think it's like 1960, I think, is when it was at its peak. So if you had a business in Detroit, what might you have to do? Cut wages. Cut wages? Maybe you have to move. Because there's not, what's gonna happen to demand? Yeah, it's going to go down. Maybe if you own two stores, you've got to sell one and go to one. This is just the reality. This is a demand shift. So we'll see in Detroit for almost all goods, the changing consumers is going to mean less demand. Las Vegas, the opposite. It's just the reality of what happened. And a lot of this was because of General Motors moving their car production to other countries. Well, let's take a look at our example now. Again, right underneath where you put your notes. Again, changing consumers. More consumers, more demand. Less consumers, less demand. That's the way you want to think about this. Now I want you to make a market demand curve, one demand curve, for the amount of cars demanded in Phoenix. How are you going to do this? Phoenix's population in 1991, Phoenix, Arizona. 1991, their population was 1 million. However, their 2001 population was... 1.35 million. So 1 million to 1.35 million. Let's look at changes in consumer taste and preferences. Changes in consumer taste and preferences. So um, taste changes. What people like, what people don't like changes. Um, so when customers like something, when it's in style, they buy more. That's pretty much taste, if they like it or don't like it. I was talking about yoga, you can see this in working out. For a while Pilates was the in thing, for a while yoga was the in thing, so if you're selling yoga DVDs, 10 years ago you were probably selling tons of them. Not as cool now, I don't think, but does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There is a style, so let me use my examples up here, which would be better than talking about working out. I got MC Hammer, with the MC Hammer pants that I was telling you about the other day. <laughs> That's real. I've seen the video many times when I was growing up, trust me. All right. So, there's MC Hammer. Is he selling a lot of CDs right now? No. Is he playing the big stadiums of 20,000 people? No. Well, he was. People were spending 100, 150 bucks to go see MC Hammer. It was the hottest ticket you can get for about three years. Did you see him? I never did see MC Hammer. Probably better off for not seeing him. <laughs> now, who do we have here? Kendrick. That's Kendrick Lamar. If Kendrick Lamar was going on tour, where would he play? He's probably not playing First Avenue, is he? No, he's probably playing at the Excel Energy. Excel, yeah, probably Excel or Target Excel Center. Center. He's going to play one of those two places because he is in style. style right now. Kendrick Lamar is very popular right now. That's why I put him on here. So, change in preference. Is there a demand shift for MC Hammer CDs? No. Well, it's a shift. It went to the left. left big time until it's almost not even on the chart anymore. Kendrick Lamar in the past, what, three years? went way to the right. Does that make sense? So, this would be a change in consumer taste and preferences. Let me pause that here. All right. So, this would be a change in style. We see that um, uh, styles have changed, and this will change demand. Demand for Kendrick Damar has shifted to the right. Demand for MC Hammer, way to the left. Even at the sell his house and everything. All right. Really? He had to sell everything, pretty much. He went bankrupt. All right, just like um, almost all NFL players three to five years after they retire. Is he dead? Nope. I was just going to ask that. Example time. Example time. So explain how the market, ignore that aggregate term for now, demand for the song, you can't touch this, has changed from, what's that, 2012? Whoops. From 1990 to 2014. Did the demand curve shift yeah. to the left or the right? So again, what you have to do is put this right in your notes. We are looking at D1 
is you can't touch this in 1991 demand if you're selling CDs. You guys remember CDs, right? So. Really? <laughs> Sorry. We still buy them. So 1991, you can't touch this. Now, you may draw the shift to 2014, you can. Let's look at change in consumer expectations. Change in consumer expectations. Now, um, this pretty much means, this is a hard one. This doesn't mean the price is changing right now. It is not the price changing right now. It's the price changing in the future. future. That's weird. Um, how this works, if you think something's going to be on sale, you will probably wait. You're not going to buy it. So if you think something's going on sale, you'll wait. So if something's going to go on sale in three months, demand right now actually goes down. If you think the price is going to go up, demand goes up. Let me give you an example. Um, I was in college when September 11th happened. I remember September 11th very clearly. I remember being in my college class. It got canceled. A bunch of us went to the commons. We were watching on TV. I got there just as the second tower was falling. So I remember that day exactly. I'm never going to forget that day. Boy, if you're like my age, you remember that forever. So, <clears throat> no, I, I, you're going to remember it forever. It's, you know, for my dad, it was like when Kennedy got shot. So, for me, September 11th is in my mind. I'm never going to forget that day. And it was a horrible tragedy, and it led us to years of war afterwards. So, I'm going to use an example up here of what happened that evening all over the country on September 11th. There were people lined up at gas stations in cities all across America. Why were there people lined up at gas stations all over America when September 11th happened? Yes. Ah, we were going to go to war with the Middle East, which would lead to what, probably? Oil. Yeah. Higher gas yeah. prices. Higher gas prices. People were afraid that gas prices might triple, quadruple. Ironically, at that time, they were about a buck thirty. Really? What? When I was in high school, you get a dollar, dollar thirty was like the going price. The lowest I remember was I once bought for eighty-eight cents. Yeah, eighty-eight. I think. Dang, how old are you? I'm probably going to be 36. I'm not that old. All right, so. Dang, you young. Aren't I though? And I'm good looking. It's all good. All right, so the change in consumer expectations was the demand on that day for gas went way up. In fact, I'm sure gas stations were calling their employees and asking them to come in, probably even telling them to pay a time and a half. Well, you would also be worthwhile because you'd be making, more money. they're making more money too. So, demand went up because the expectation was that gas prices were going to go up. Is that an actual line? Or or just kind of like no, it's an actual line. Is that the actual prices of gas? Uh, this is about the highest gas prices I've been. I think that's California. Right now? So, no, not right now. I think about like two, two well, diesel. that's diesel. But um, uh, for your, oh. the cheap one that we all buy is uh, $5.45. <laughs> Um, that California gas price is about right, two. Why do they have like four different types of gas? They have three of them diesel. Yeah, diesel for trucks. All right, so example time. Let's go do our example. So April 23rd, that would be um, today. So you're tired, I just made this. Um, April 23rd, iPads cost $500. However, on April 30th, the word gets out. Someone starts spreading the word. People hear it's in some news agencies saying that the iPads are going to go on sale in June. I don't know why, but it's, word gets out about that. That the iPads are going to drop in price in June. They're going to drop maybe $100 even. Make a graph, and on your graph, you're going to show demand on April 23rd and the shift on April 30th. Don't include June. April 23rd and April 30th. This is probably going to be the most confusing one. All right, so change in, change in prices of a substitute good. It used to be if you wanted to go get a video, and you have to get a VHS and you can't get these, if you wanted to go rent a movie, you went to a blockbuster or a place like that. <laughs> and then you would pay like $3 for one movie. 
and you'd have to return it like the next day or in